Hi everyone, this is the story about a cucumber plant. It started its life, as most plants do, from a seed. Here are the seeds I used. These are from Burpee. They are a small growing variety ready to harvest in 53 days. So I planted a couple in some rock wool and only one actually germinated. Since there are 30 seeds in a packet, that was a little disappointing. The seedling on the left is the cucumber plant this story is about. The seedling on the right is a tomato seedling that also lived a fruitful life, but that is a different story. Back to the cucumber seedling. After it was about two weeks old, I transferred it into a mason jar using the same method I've used in the past to grow lettuce and other leafy greens. I have a video on how I did this for my hydroponic tomato plants. I used the same method and discovered the same problem. Ultimately, these mason jars were too small for the cucumber plant. So as you're watching this video, my first suggestion to you is start with a bigger container. I'm currently using a five gallon tote to grow two tomato plants and another two cucumber plants. The idea is to set up a reservoir that will contain enough hydroponic water to last the entire life cycle of the plant. This is easy for lettuce since the life cycle is short, but for tomatoes and cucumber plants you need a bigger container. But the cucumber plant in this video had its start in a small container. I started it the same way I start my lettuce plants. I start the seeds in rock wool, and once they've developed some small roots poking out from the bottom, or some true leaves, I move the rock wool into a net cup and suspend it in a mason jar above water that has hydroponic nutrients. I cover the mason jar with a paper sleeve to keep the light from hitting the water. We don't want to encourage algae growth. Sometimes I wrap the mason jars in aluminum foil. It's easier to form around the jar and the result is the same. It keeps the light out but it's much easier to look at the water level with the paper sleeve than it is with the aluminum foil. Now the cucumber seedling is four weeks old and you can see some new growth here. And now we are at five weeks into the life of this plant and you can see the leaves are growing bigger and so are the roots. Now it's a week later and I realized the first container was too small for the plant so I moved it to a bigger mason jar this will be good enough for quite a long time, but ultimately I will have to move it again. So learn from my mistake and start with a bigger container. This plant is now seven weeks old, that is 35 days. It is under grow lights and it looks healthy, but it's growing pretty slowly. Let's take a closer look. You can see longer roots here going down into the water to take in the hydroponic nutrients. And if you look closely, you will see some roots that are shorter and a little thicker. Those are the air roots that thrive in the oxygen-rich environment in the gap between where the water level is and the plant above it. This is an important part of the Kratky method, having a gap between the water and the plant for the water to take in the oxygen it needs and also to get the water and nutrients it needs to survive. So now we are at eight weeks and the plant is still thriving. And here we are at nine weeks and the plant keeps on growing. It just looks so full of life. And as I look around, I find a hiding under a leaf, a yellow flower. And now it's just a few days later and the cucumber plant is putting out a lot of flowers, as you can see. And there are a lot of tendrils on the plant which are looking for something to hold on to. I'm going to rig something up for the plant to climb up on. Now let's take a look at the water level you can see it has dropped down a bit, so I'm going to top it off with some hydroponic water to about halfway down the jar. You should keep a nice gap below the plant, maybe one or even two inches so that the plant has enough oxygen. This method is different from the deep water culture method, which uses an air pump. It's a simpler method developed by Dr. Kratke at the University of Hawaii, and the idea was to have a hydroponic system that did not need electricity or pumps. I need electricity for the grow lights since I grow indoors, but if this was set up outdoors or in a greenhouse, you could really set up the crab key system without any electricity at all. I mixed up some master blend formula in a five gallon jug, and I'm adding a little of it to the mason jar, but I don't want to add any more at this point since I don't want to drown the plant. It needs the gap of air as I explained before. 
If you're not familiar with the Kratky method of hydroponics, I have a video explaining how it works. I will leave a link to it below in the description box. Now I put the paper sleeve back on and let the plant enjoy some peace and quiet while it continues to grow. And grow it does. So to help it spread out, I dropped some rope down from a hook in the ceiling and tied the growing vine to it with a twister. Eventually the tendrils figured out what to do on their own and grabbed onto the rope by themselves and climbed up and up and up. Now it's a couple of days later and you can see the tendrils have wrapped themselves around the rope and the plant is starting to climb up. And look at all the flowers. And these flowers will need to be hand pollinated since I don't have any bees or butterflies or birds flying around the house to help with that. So I have to do the pollination myself. The male flowers are just flowers on the plant with nothing behind them but the stem. At this point I only see male flowers. I haven't seen any female flowers on the plant yet. You can recognize them easily. They will have a tiny fruit, in this case a cucumber, behind the flower. Now let's take a look at the water level and you can see how low it's dropped. So I'm going to need to top it off with some more solution. This is where I started to realize the mistake I made with this plant and also with my hydroponic tomato plant. You really want to set this up in a container that can hold enough hydroponic solution for the entire growing cycle of the plant, or at least most of the growing cycle. This mason jar clearly does not hold enough water for this type of plant. Fruiting plants such as tomatoes and cucumbers are heavy water drinkers, so when you set this up for your own plants, make sure to use a big enough container to start. I'm now using 5 gallon totes to grow my cracky plants. Here is a great example of a female flower. If you look behind the yellow flower, you can see the beginnings of a cucumber growing behind the flower. If you don't pollinate the flower with pollen from the male flower, that cucumber will shrivel up and die. I'm using a paintbrush. I dip it into the male flower, that's this flower without any fruit behind it, and then spread it onto the flower with the fruit behind it. This is a time-consuming task, and as the plant puts out more and more flowers, I find it hard to keep up with the hand pollination routine. Many potential cucumbers from this plant will ultimately shrivel up and die because I missed them, or didn't do a good enough job pollinating them. Still, I did get a nice crop of cucumbers from this plant. The cucumbers I'm currently growing are a parthenocarpic species, that is, they self-pollinate. They are diva cucumbers. I will have a video on that once they produce fruit. It is now 12 weeks since I planted the seed and we finally have a cucumber and many more will come. Here is one that is shriveled up and dying, probably because I missed it when I went around the plant looking for flowers to pollinate. The birds and the bees do a much better job than I could ever do. A couple of days later I realized the plant is very stressed out. It is putting out lots of female flowers with tiny cucumbers behind them and I'm going around and pollinating by hand and the little cukes just end up shriveling and dying. They are not maturing into cucumbers. Although I have used crack key very successfully for leafy non-fruiting plants and herbs such as lettuce, basil, parsley, spinach and so on, this together with my tomato plant was the first time I had tried the crack key method to grow cucumbers. At this point I knew I needed to transplant the cucumber plant into a bigger container. The plant was very stressed out. I did not have a big enough container at the time to set up a cracky system for it, so I used what I had on hand and transplanted the poor plant to a container with organic soil. I wasn't quite sure how to transplant the plant since the roots were embedded in the net cup. I suppose I could have planted the whole thing in the pot, but for some reason I thought I should remove the plant from the net cup first, and with some difficulty I was able to cut out the net cup and get the plant out without doing too much damage to the root system. Okay, here is the cucumber plant repotted. It is now 14 weeks since I planted this as a seed, and you can see the lower leaves show the stress the plant was under. But up on top we can see some nice healthy growth, so I think the plant is going to be okay. Here we are at 15 weeks and the plant is recovering nicely. I'm going to trim off these dead and dying leaves so the plant can concentrate its energy on putting out fresh new growth and hopefully produce some cucumbers. Now we are at 16 weeks and you can see the plant is starting to put out female flowers with cucumbers. 
but now I don't see any male flowers to pollinate them with. So here is where I learned another very important lesson. Save the male flowers with the pollen, and then when the female flowers appear, you can use those to pollinate the flowers. Actually, I learned a better lesson, and that is to buy self-pollinating varieties or parthenocarpic plants so that you don't have to worry about pollination. The cucumber plant continued its life in soil, spreading its vines and putting out more flowers that needed to be pollinated. But although I would find lots of small cucumbers behind the female flowers, they were all disappearing, shriveling up and dying. None of them were surviving, so at this point I realized that even this pot was too small and transplanted the plant once again into a bigger pot. And then, finally, one day, a cucumber. And this one has potential. It turns out this was the first of many cucumbers. Once the plant was finally settled in a big enough container, it was happy again and continued its journey growing, climbing, and producing. So what did I learn from this experience? Well, first of course, start with a big enough container. I'm already growing tomatoes and cucumbers in bigger containers, so I've got that one covered. Next, save the male flowers if they appear first, to pollinate with the female flowers if they both don't appear at the same time. And finally, if you're growing indoors, look for varieties that don't need to be pollinated. And so the story ends happily, the cucumber plant fulfilled its purpose in life, and our family enjoyed fresh, homegrown cucumbers. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any experiences or comments you'd like to share, please leave them below, and thank you for watching. Bye!